long we had uh, new believers, I mean new members today. But uh, your testimony goes right in line with what I'm preaching on today. Praise so. God. Amen. Amen. If you turn the Bible to Acts chapter 6. And while you're turning there, I want to encourage you to get a copy of, by CD, or look on our Facebook. All the sermons are uploaded to our website or Facebook. And if you didn't hear last week's message, I want to encourage you to listen to it because it's a message that I feel needs to be heard by the entire church. It's entitled, Loss for Words. And so, uh, get a copy of that. Uh, on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday at 6.30, there's going to be a prayer and, and vigil outside the Southern Tier Women's Service as a kickoff for the pro-life 40 Days of Life. Anybody know about that? It's 40 Days of Life. Yeah. And uh, the it, vigil's going to run from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily from September 26th through November 4th. And so it's always good to take part of these things that come against uh, that practice of abortion. And, and I'm planning on being part of that. But as good as it is to be involved in those things, uh, and I'm all for it, don't get me wrong. I, I think that we're targeting the wrong people. We target the people who are having an abortion or the people who are uh, doing an abortion. But I think it's the church that needs to be targeted, as I said in that message last week. The church needs to get together, come in unity on the side of what the Bible says about abortion. And if we did that, that practice would end. And we wouldn't have to go to the uh, Southern Tier Women's Health, whatever it's called. So God always puts a burden of society, not on the world, but he puts it on the church. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. It doesn't say if those people out in the world do it. He's talking about his people. So he puts a burden on us. Yes. And so we can vigil all we want as good as that is, but it's God's people that need to do something. And as I was thinking about the last couple messages that I preached and... Uh, I, to me, I thought they were powerful, not because I preached yes. just the content of the message, but Satan hates certain sermons. Yeah. He really hates certain... Two weeks ago, I preached on the boring message, which was just about the cross and Jesus dying on the cross. Satan hates that message. Yes. And last week, in the, in the uh, Lost for Words, it was about church unity. Satan hates that. Because he knows what would get what would happen if the church got together. Yes. So he hates church unity. And he's going to hate this sermon today. Because this sermon today is talking about what the church should be doing with what's available to them. See, being a Christian is more than worshiping and listening to a sermon. And, and sadly, that is the extent of many people's Christian experience. Worshiping and listening to a message. Say that. Worshiping and maybe read your Bible once in a while. But being a Christian has much more to do, it, it has to do with what Maria said. It's, it's putting feet to the gospel. It's more yeah. than just, you know, it's more than just doing good things. A lot of people think, well, we're Christians, we do good things. There's a church out there named Bridgewater. You've all heard of Bridgewater before, I'm yeah. sure. And Bridgewater is fantastic at doing good things. Mm. And I'm, I'm not throwing stones to them. We need to do good things. Yes. But being a Christian is more than just doing good things. It's about doing God things. Yes. That's what Maria did. Doing God things. And yes. so that's what I want to look at today. So... My wife has been teaching, as she said, from Louis Giglio's video uh, series on the book of Acts. And, and some of you have looked at this passage that I'm going to share in Acts chapter 6. And so you've been in her class looking at the book of Acts. So that makes you all class Acts. All right. <laughs> but we sang songs this morning. You know, I don't just pick songs at random. Now, there's new songs we, we put in. We have to do the new songs so that we don't forget them, that you can learn them. But the songs are usually geared for a message. And uh, we sang songs like all the power you need. Mm -hmm. We sang songs like all things are possible. Mm -hmm. And it's time. It's time for the dead to rise. But they're more than songs to be sung through. They are truths to be clung to. Yes. 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 Because not all churches can sing those songs. Not all churches believe like we do. And they can't sing songs like that and mean it. 
But we still believe that God still says and does what He has always yes. said and done. Yes. Yes. We believe that God did miracles 2,000 years ago and 4,000 years ago, but we also believe that God still does miracles today. Amen? Yes. Yes. We believe that God healed back then and He still can heal today. Yes. We believe that God used ordinary people to do extraordinary things 2,000 years ago. Yes. And he, we believe that He still uses ordinary people like Maria to do yes. extraordinary things today. I mean, just consider for a moment the things that the prophet Elijah did. Supernatural things happen, not at the word of God, and I've mentioned this before, but supernatural things happen at Elijah's word. Listen to this, it says in 1 Kings 17, There will be no dew, Elijah says, or rain in the next few years, except that my word, he says. He said, my word. Why? Because he was so in tune with the word of God that his word didn't conflict with the All word right. of God. He could declare things just like it was the word of God. Elijah raises a widow's son to life. The boy was dead. He says, oh Lord, let this boy's life return to him. And it did. He calls fire down from the sky and yes. fire came down. I want you to know Elijah wasn't a superhuman Christian. No. Elijah wasn't this uh, uh, a special person that God had. Matter of fact, the book of James says that Elijah was a man just like us. Yeah. That means he was somebody just like you and just like me and just like Maria. Yes. The word meant what it said 2,000 years ago, and I still believe it means what it says today. God wants to work in and through us today, just like He worked through and in Elijah, and just like He worked in and through those in the first century. Jesus Himself said 2,000 years ago, and I, I love this, I mention it all the time, but He prefaces this with this, I tell you the truth. Yes. You yes. heard me mention this all the time, because I just think it's profound that Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Yes. He always tells us the truth, so why does He have to tell us that He's telling us the truth? He wants us to get it. Yes. yes. What he's about to share after those words, I tell you the truth, is something so profound that most of the church dismisses it because they think it's impossible. So he says, I tell you the truth, if anyone, and that means if anyone at any time has faith in me, well, they will do what I have been doing and even greater things. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus said. Yeah. He's telling us the truth. I tell you, in that verse right there, John 14, 12, it's still good to go today. Actually, it is God to go. Yes. 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 Amen. You know what I said this morning? When you're a Christian, you are a heavenly takeout service. <laughs> Actually, you're a heavenly bring-in service. You bring in the kingdom of God. So you are God to go. All right. Amen. Fast Thank food. you, Anita. Amen. That was good. Yes. Fast food. Now, there's some denominations out there that say that there's no miracles anymore. There's no healings anymore. All these things, there's no gifts of the Spirit anymore. All these things have ceased. God just doesn't operate like that any longer in our time. And so, it tells me that well, the Lord must be on some kind of sabbatical for the last 2,000 years. I mean... They say that it's only the apostles that were appointed by God to do things on earth as is in heaven. Mm. And that after the last apostle died, the power was turned off. Lord Jesus. We have no more power after the last apostle died. It went dormant. It, it, it seems to me like all of God's children that lived 2,000 years ago or 4,000 years ago, they, they were God's favorites. Mm. He did great things through them. And now he just tells us, look what I did through them. <laughs> look what I enabled them to do. Lord Jesus. It's like a parent telling one of the children, look what I did for your brother. <laughs> you don't get nothing. Look what I bought for him. <laughs> but you're blessed too because you can hear about it and read about it. Oh Lord. I don't know about you, but I don't want to just read about it and hear about it. I want to experience it because yeah. God said it's something that we can experience today. Because just hearing and reading about what God did and through them yes. doesn't square with the Word of God because the Word of God says in Acts 10, 34, God does not show favoritism. Right. He's no respecter of persons. So if the early church was used in the supernatural things of God and the early Christians were used in the supernatural things of God, 
then we too, this church, can be used in the supernatural things. And you can be used in the supernatural things of God. If we have the right credentials. And we're going to look at a man today who had the right credentials. Acts chapter 6, verse 5. The second half of it says, They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. And verse 8, And Stephen, full of grace and power, look at this, was performing great wonders and signs among the people. So Lord, open our eyes to all that is available to the church today if we would only step out into that realm. Who was this man, Stephen? He was not an apostle. He was not one of the twelve disciples. He was just somebody in the congregation that believed God. Just an average, ordinary person in the congregation who truly lived what he believed. And he believed what God said. That's who he was. And so he was just an ordinary person, but God uses him to do supernatural things. My title today is Even Stephen. Yes. <laughs> that phrase, Even Stephen, means to be this, on the same or equal plane. Evenly divided, equal distribution. God's no respecter of persons. God has given us the same distribution of the Holy Spirit that He gave them. Yes. He has given us the same distribution of power that He's given them. The same measure of anointing that He's given them. The same measure of grace that He's given. He did all he, that He gave for all the people. It's for us today also. Yes. God still says and does everything that He ever said and does. Yes. Did. Even Stephen. <laughs> even us. Even yes. And even now. Yes. So the chapter is about the installation of the office of deacons. We had some deacons that were up here today. Because as the church began to grow, it was harder and harder for the men who were called to preach and to minister the Word. It was harder for them to take care of the day-to-day -day needs of the growing congregation. So they appointed deacons who were supposed to be, according to verse 3, known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. Not just anybody, but somebody who really believes what they're living. Amen? Yes. Not, 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 not a hypocrite. Somebody who's living what they believe in their children. To help look, in, look after the congregation. And so that freed up the pastor to seek God yes. and pray and to minister the Word. Thank you, Lord. So, so we're going to take a look at Stephen's credentials today. Just an ordinary, normal Christian to show you how God can use you. Mm. Why? Because he, even, he used even Stephen. Mm -hmm. And He'll use you if you are, number one, full of persuasion. Yes. Persuasion. Verse 5 says they chose Stephen, a man full of faith. What is faith? Faith is nothing other than having a full persuasion that God means yes. what He said. That's right. That's what faith is. Stephen was full of faith. And we're people of faith, but are we full of faith? All right. We're people who may be faithful, but are we faithful? Because if we're full of something, there's no room for anything else. All right. Because if there's room for anything else, then you're really not full of something. So when you're full of faith, that means there's no room for doubt. There you go. Yes. So are we faithful? The word faith, as I said, is fully persuaded that God's Word says what it means and means what it says. Yes. Fully persuaded that God's Word is true. If He said we can have it, and if He said we can do it, then we can have it and we can do it yes. even if it looks ridiculously impossible. Right. Yes. Uh -huh. Listen to what was written of Abraham in Romans 4.20. I, listen to these words carefully because it's powerful. Abraham, remember he was facing something impossible. Mm -hmm. It says, yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God. God gave him a promise and the promise looked impossible. Yes. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God. 
but was strengthened in his faith, yes. being fully persuaded. That means fully. full of faith, so there was yes. no room for doubt. Yes. Fully persuaded yes. that God had the power to do yes. what he promised, right. even yes. when it looked impossible. Uh -huh. That's Amen. what being full of faith means. So here was Stephen, an ordinary man. He had the same assurance. He did not waver. He was strengthened in his faith. And he's fully persuaded of God's ability. He was fully yeah. persuaded of God's word. And it enabled him to perform signs and wonders. Yes. yes. He had the truth of Mark chapter 16 that signs and wonders would follow them that believe. And he believed it. And what happened? Signs and wonders followed him. Yes. See, someone full of faith doesn't come up with reasons why they can't do no. what the Word of God says. You know what does that? Doctrines. Okay. Some church doctrines come up with reasons why we can't do John 14, 12. Why we can't do greater things. So they have to build up a doctrine about it. And they have to teach a doctrine. Well, that's really not for us today. That was for them. Lord Jesus. But someone who's persuaded of the truth doesn't find reasons why they can't do what the Word right, of God says. Amen. It says that we can do what the Word of God says and we can do it even if some people think we can't do it. Yes, amen. So, what's happened to the church today? The church has matured Beyond belief. That's it. Lord Jesus. Yep. Preach it. Beyond That's belief. It. Oh, when, you, when you're a young Christian, oh yeah, you're believing it. Mm -hmm. But you reach that maturity uh, level. And now, oh, I used to believe that when I was that. younger. But you'll grow up. Don't ever grow up. Jesus. Well, you can grow up for God's sake. Yes. <laughs> I shared with you about a, a pastor friend of mine. Went to Bible school and I'm sharing some things about the supernatural with him as Pastor Sam and I used to always do that on our trips. These guys are like, oh boy, here they come again. We share about the supernatural and he comes up to me and he says to me, he says, you know, I used to believe just like you did. Oh my goodness. Until I went to Bible school. Oh. And I said, man, I'm glad I didn't go to your Bible school. <laughs> he was educated beyond belief. Lord Jesus. So what do we have in the church today? This, listen to this. I've said it before, but it's good. Whatever something good, you can say it more than once. Okay. I made mistakes when I preach. I never say it again. Oh, no. But if I say something good, I'll say it again. Good. Because in the church, we have two kinds of people. Oops. Or at least two. Believing believers uh -huh. or unbelieving believers. They're both saved. Believing believers and unbelieving. Believing believers believe in God. They believe in the whole Word of God. Even if they don't understand it, even, though, if, even if they haven't experienced it, they still believe it. Mm. That's believing believers. Unbelieving believers believe in God for salvation. They're saved. But they limit their belief according to, listen to this, according to their understanding yeah. or according to their experience. If they haven't experienced it, then they can't believe it. And, and I was guilty of that. You know, I, I was raised, I, I didn't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. Why? Because I, I, I didn't experience it. Okay. There's some people who don't believe in healing until they get healed. <laughs> See, experience will change your doctrine. You can sit there and, and dogmatically say, I don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit, and all of a sudden you start speaking in tongues. Well, that just changed your doctrine. Yeah. yeah. Amen. <laughs> and so we have the believing believers and the unbelieving believers. And full of faith means that there's no room in your life or no room in your thinking to believe yes. that God did not mean what He said in His Word. Amen. And if we start coming to God's Word and just look at it for what it said, not for what you were taught by some church or denomination, but you look at what the Word of God says, you're going to believe for the supernatural. Yes. Yes. You're going to believe that it's for today. Because you have to be taught not to believe it. Amen. Okay? All right. So if he, listen, if he said that he would supply all your needs, then a person who's full of faith would be fully persuaded that once they've done their part, no matter what the checkbook says, no matter what the bank account says, no matter what's going on, God is going to supply your needs. Why? Because there's no need for unbelief when you're full of faith. He does that. If he said that nothing would be impossible for us, 
then a person who's full of faith will be fully persuaded that no matter what they're facing in their life, no matter how impossible it is, it is going to be possible. Why? Because there's no room for unbelief when you're full of faith. Yeah, amen. When he says you can heal the sick and cleanse the leper and drive out demons and even raise the dead, then the person who is full of faith will be fully persuaded that they can heal the sick, yeah. that they can cleanse the leper and drive out demons and raise the dead. But even if it doesn't happen, here's the thing. They will not shake their faith that it could happen. That's right. Why? Because there's no room for unbelief when you're full of faith. That's right. I have an experience raising the dead, but I believe we can do it. I know, I know. Why? Because the Word of God says it. I don't have to base it on my experience. Amen? Amen? So when He tells us that I tell you the truth, if you have faith in me, you'll do what I have done and even greater things, right. the person who's full of faith will be fully persuaded that they'll be able to do greater things than Jesus did. And even if they don't, it will not shake their faith because there's no room for unbelief when you're full of faith. No room. There's a lot of other things you can be full of. Oh, yeah. But I just like to be full of faith. All right, Amen. then. <laughs> you don't know what I was thinking. Nah. I was thinking doubt. Good thing. Okay. All right. That's easy. How many of you had more than one finger last week? No, no, no. What? I have ten. Can't you see? <laughs> Pastor Brian, how many did you have? Uh, a bunch. <laughs> a bunch. <laughs> you had to get the message to find out what that was about. I got to tell you this, I, we were at a retirement party for my sister-in-law yesterday and one of the guys who goes to my brother's church come over to me and says, your brother got some deacons bad for something I told him to do. I said, David, I want you to go and ask your church if the book of Hezekiah, how many think the book of Hezekiah is in the New Testament? Oh. Raise your hand. Nobody raise your hand. How many think the book of Hezekiah is in the Old Testament? Deacon's hands are going up. And there's no book of Hezekiah in the Bible no. at all. He says, oh man, they just made him look bad. In Matthew chapter 17, when the disciples couldn't drive out an evil spirit, they asked Jesus why we couldn't drive it out. And you know what he told them? Because of your unbelief. Because you're not fully persuaded that you can, so you can't. If you're not persuaded that you're fully persuaded that you can, you won't be able to. Ah. So unbelief will keep us from driving out demons and healing the sick. Unbelief will keep us from being filled with the uh, Spirit. But it's a present tense reality because He still says and does everything that He ever said and did. Mm -hmm. Even Stephen. Even us. Yes. Even now. Anything less would rob the gospel of power. Yes. What? Yes. A gospel without power is no gospel at all. Yes. Yes. That's right. Yes. Amen. Amen. So God will use you because he used even Stephen if, number two, you're full of potential. Potential. Yes. Verse 8 says, and Stephen was full of grace. Okay. Grace is the potential of God on our life. Yes. yes. We're saved by grace, we're kept by grace, but what does it mean to be full of grace? Full of grace. Mm. The church is filled with potential. Potential. Just waiting to tap into it. But the church hasn't been used to its full potential. Okay. Even though the potential is there. Potential. It's our potential through His empowerment. That's grace. It is God's favor in us. That Listen to this. That enables us to do what we could not normally do on our own. Okay. Amen. If we could do it on our own, we wouldn't need God's potential. Right. Mm. So grace enables us to do what we are not able to do on our own. <coughs> and I, I mentioned this in, this morning. I want to throw it out again. Because in Mark chapter 16... There's the Great Commission. You, you know what that is. Going to all the world and preach the gospel and make disciples. And, and people take that and they put it over their, their doors. I have nothing against any of that. But if you look at that chapter, in the NIV it will tell you that whole section is, was not in the original manuscripts. Okay. So along with that is 
and you will lay hands on the sick and to be well, and you even pick up snakes and cleanse the leper and all this stuff. It's in that same context. And so if you go up to some of these people and say, look at the Word of God says we can lay our hands on sick, and they go, oh no, brother, that's not in the original text. And I said, well, neither is going to all the world, but you don't have a problem grabbing onto that one. And the reason they grab onto that one because you don't need the power of God to go into all the world and take the gospel. You can preach with no anointing, no power at all. Preach but you it. can't heal the sick without God's power. So, so they look at that, well, that's there supernatural. We'll dismiss this. This we can do on our own, so we'll do it, but we'll get rid of this. Yeah. And that's how people do with the gospel. Because, because when it comes to the supernatural, do we still really believe in the supernatural? And so we, the potential of God is for us to do the impossible. The potential we have is impossible in our own strength, but it's made possible by the enabling grace of God. Amen. So, so we have the potential for the impossible. Yes. Now going into the old world and all the world preaching the gospel, that's the possible. But we have the potential for the Impossible. Yes. The healing the sick, yes. raising the dead, yes. cleansing the leper, yes. driving out demons, all these things. Amen. It yes. is God's empowering presence that gives us the potential to do what is beyond our ability. Yes. We don't have the ability to heal anybody. Come on. But His grace gives us beyond our ability yes. and beyond our understanding. I don't understand how I can explain it. I can understand how people can go into all the world and preach the gospel, but I can't understand how the sick are healed. Mm. Because it's beyond our ability, beyond our understanding. Yes. And that's where God wants to take us. So grace is not beyond belief, it's beyond ability. Beyond ability. Grace yes. saves us and it empowers us to give us the potential, what the Bible says, to participate. In the divine yes. nature of God. Yes. yes. That's what Maria did. God could have healed that woman's husband. Yes. But he's looking for somebody who's willing to step out and participate. Yes. yes. How? By going up and praying. Yes. Somebody you don't even know. Mm. You are now participating in the divine nature of God. Amen. Yes. Amen. So his desire for those early believers who were fully persuaded to use the potential in them to do the impossible. Yes. That's what Stephen did. Stephen wasn't an apostle. So it wasn't just limited to the apostles. Apostles. He wasn't one of the disciples, 12 yeah. disciples. He was simply a Christian, but one who was full of persuasion yes. and filled with potential. Thank you, Lord. His grace is enough, the Bible says, more than you need. Ephesians 3.20, now to him is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine. According to his power, what is his power? The enabling grace that is in work in each of us. Yes. Acts 4.33 says, with great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord. Watch this. And much grace was upon them. Much potential much. was upon them. They were able to operate in power because of that potential, that grace that was on them. The potential was there and they used it. The potential is here today. God's grace is the extraordinary empowerment of His nature upon ordinary people and into situations. But today in the church, grace is just a cover-up. Oh. I sin, but the grace of God covers it for me. It is the enabling power of the Holy Spirit to say no to sin. That's what the book of Titus tells us. And to accomplish what Jesus did by the Spirit. And Stephen believed that he too could do what Jesus did. Why? Because of the grace. He knew the potential he had that he could do all things through Christ that strengthened him. All things, how, all things through Christ who enabled him. It's the potential of grace. Amen. Thank Stephen, you, Lord. Even Stephen, even us, even now. Yes. So Stephen was full of faith. He was full of grace. 
He had the persuasion. He had the God-given ability. And many in the church stop right there. They're, they're, they, they take their faith and they have the power available to them, but they never do anything. Come on, when preacher. the Holy Spirit whispers, go pray for that person. Mm. Not me. <laughs> because faith is a scary thing. Faith is never comfortable. In order to have faith, you have to step out in an uncomfortable area. You have to do something that God's telling you to do when your flesh tells you, I don't want to do that. Nah, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So God will use you like He used even Stephen if you are full of power. It says in verse 8, and Stephen was full of grace and power, which means that he was full of grace and he was full of power. So faith is the knowing... Grace is the flowing, and power is the showing. It's a demonstration of the Spirit yes. of power. It's yes. one thing to know it. It's one thing to have the power available, but it's another thing to do it. Yep. Yes, amen. Yeah. It is doing something with what God has given you based on the faith that you can do it. Mm -hmm. So Stephen did great wonders and miraculous signs. Mm. I thought that was just for the apostles. <laughs> No, even Stephen was performing miraculous signs and wonders. Do you know what that means? That he was healing diseases. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he wasn't doing card tricks. <laughs> he wasn't taking out handkerchiefs and pulling stuff out of them. Yeah. I mean, signs and wonders mean he was healing diseases. Yeah. He was casting out demons. He was yeah. performing miracles. Even Stephen was doing what the apostles did. Even Stephen was doing what Jesus did. And even yeah. we can do what even Stephen did. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Because once you're per fully persuaded that God's Word means that we can do what it says we can do, then the potential of grace kicks in to enable us to do what He said we can do. Mm -hmm. And power is released when we step out. Thank you, Jesus. And like I said, supernatural power, I'm coming to a close, but supernatural power is very seldom released until someone does something to show that they really believe it. Yes. That's okay. where the rubber meets it. We can, we can say that we believe it, yeah. but when someone actually steps up and shows they can they believe Jesus. it, that's where faith kicks in. That's, right. that's something scary. Right. Oh, it'd be nice to just, uh, I, uh, Lord, I pray for that person's healing, that person gets healed. That's not how God operates. God operates when you step out of your comfort right. zone and right. you go over to that person and lay your hand on and say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Yes. That's a scary place to be. Woo. It's easy to stay in your prayer closet and have your prayer list and say, Lord, I pray for the yeah. reason. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. But when you step out in faith, it doesn't take any faith to do that. It takes faith to step out. And Boy, I remember when we used to go to the Walmart. We were doing that. Anybody remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. Anybody remember what that was called? Treasure Hunt? Treasure yes. hunt. Treasure Anybody remember hunt. the treasure hunt? Yes. That put faith. <laughs> and just to mention yes. that is, is putting fear into some yes. of your hearts already. Yes. It's putting fear in your heart. Yes. Because you go out, no matter where, Walmart, wherever you go, and we send teams out there and we're looking for some. We pray before we go and we're looking for a person that has a limp. Come on. And so you go there and all of a sudden, oh man, now we got to go over and pray for that person. And some of the things that we come up with, okay, I, there's a, a lady with a yellow with yellow shorts. Yeah. Whew, I'll never find anybody with you. You go there, there's a lady with yellow yeah. shorts. <laughs> you have to walk up to her and you have to pray over her. See, that yeah. takes faith. That's a scary zone right there. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, uh -huh. they're out of that one. Boy. No. Yeah. No, but they were excited. We were we were scared to death when we were doing it, but right. when we came back, it's like, yes! Yeah, yeah. Woo! Right. So we saw people with tears in their eyes. Yeah. And, I mean, people are, okay, move your leg and see if it moves now. Okay, we're going to pray over that thing again. Oh. Radical. No, normal. You know what a normal... Yes. A normal Christian doesn't need revival. Burger King, that's what he made me do that. A normal Christian doesn't need revival. So normal Christians can declare the things of God. Yeah. If you can't, then you need revival. Come on. Because it's beyond our ability. Amen? Okay, let me get back to this so I can get you out. Jesus! There's another man, uh, Ananias, in chapter 9. 
He, was, he wasn't an apostle either. He wasn't one of the twelve disciples. And yet because of his faith and by the grace of God, he was able to release miraculous power that opened the eyes of Saul of Tarsus. Uh -huh. So where did they get the idea it was just the apostles? Uh -huh. Because they have to make excuse why the They're church not is powerless. Uh -huh. yes, powerless. The church is supposed to be filled and full of power. Because why? Because we have all the potential available to us. All the grace available to us. Unfortunately, power is not released because we're not really fully persuaded, really persuaded. of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. So, let me put it this way. Break it all down. We have the power of heaven backing us. Provided by the horsepower of His grace. But it's faith that pushes the clutch and connects the potential to the power. Yes. Yes. But most of the church has never pushed in the clutch and connected the potential. potential. Ah. So if you've never pushed in the clutch and as it were shifted ah. the potential into the power, what happens? You're in neutral idling. And much of the church is in neutral idling. And so the church itself, the building itself becomes a garage. And so when you're in a garage and you're idling, what happens? You become asphyxiated. Um, yes. And die. Die. Yeah. Hello. Asphyxiated means to render incapable or powerless. Jesus. And so much of the church believes that we're incapable of doing the supernatural. So they are rendered powerless from doing the supernatural. And their doctrine has asphyxiated them. Uh -huh. yes. mm -hmm. So how are we going to give, like Stephen did, a demonstration of the Spirit's power if we don't believe that it's for today? We're not going to do it. Not going to happen. Preach it. And that's why many people don't see a demonstration of the Spirit's power because we're convinced that we oh, can't do this Jesus. demonstration of the Spirit's yes. power. Lord Jesus. How are we going to participate in God's divine nature if we believe that we can't? We're not going to be able to. Right. Stephen did what the apostles did. And they all did what Jesus did. And He is no respecter of person. So if you're full of faith and you're full of grace and you're full of power, yes. that means that you're fully persuaded. The potential yes. is there for the power to be released. Yes. Even Stephen, even us, and even now. We just stand to your feet. That's it. That's it. Would you bow your heads just for one moment? We're only a couple minutes late. I'll make up for it next week. We'll finish at 1.30 to make up for getting late today. But grace means the enabling power of God. If you're not saved, it's the enabling power to save you because you don't have the power to save yourself. Oh, I wish you could be saved by the fact that you're a good person. I wish you could be saved by the fact that you help people. But the truth is you cannot. You have no power to save yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you've never received this grace, this, there's potential for your salvation today. Yes. And it's free. You yes. can't earn it. You can't buy it. You can't be good enough to get it. But All it's right. available to you yes. today. Yes. You have to be fully persuaded that God's Word is true. God's Word says that all have sinned no matter how good yes. you are. All have sinned um, and come short of the glory of God. Um, and because you're a sinner, it says the wages of sin is death. death. But the gift of God is eternal life through the grace of God. If you come to this altar today to receive that grace, power will be released into your life to forgive you, to save you, to redeem you and enable you to live for Him. If you don't know Christ, come on, slip out of your seat and come to this altar. The potential is here. The enabling grace is here today. Yes. For you. Jesus. Lord, desires none to perish. Come forward if you're not saved. Could you bear with me just 30 seconds longer? Oh, yeah. My sister wrote a beautiful thing about my mom on Facebook. Mm. And she put, you need to love your mom every day, something along those lines. And I have the best mom along those lines. 
Because when she's gone, you'll never see her again. Mm. Well, yes, and I put on there, I says, I'll see her again. Yes. Yeah. And she said to me, she put on there and she said, I'm, I'm sure you will. She says, but maybe you need to preach that to us who aren't saved. Whoa. I'm thinking, you're never here to hear it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Pray for Jody. Mm. Yes, amen. So, Chris, I'm going to ask you just in close. Are you full of faith? You're full of faith. That means there's no room for nothing else. You're fully persuaded that God means what He says and says what He means. And if you are, then you're full of grace. You have the potential to do what is beyond your ability, beyond your understanding. Now you have to just look for opportunities like Maria did. Amen. In your day-to-day -day life, look for opportunities yes. and situations that you can walk up and release that power. And yes. you're going to see miracles. You're not going to see miracles in here no. praying for them out there. Come on. But this week, I, I want to challenge you this week. Not with the treasure hunt thing, as scary as that was. But I want to challenge you to be, to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit like Maria. Sent it to the Holy Spirit, and, and, and the Lord will show you. Yes, He will. I want you to go up to this person. No, I'm not, that's not my personality. But I want to use you. I want to challenge you with that. Yes, Lord. Now, just step out into those situations and release the power. So now unto Him who is able to do exceeding yes. abundantly, or infinitely more than we could ask or think yes. according to the power that works in us according to the grace that works in us. So Lord, we're not just releasing us to go and take the gospel, but the power of the gospel yes, into the world. And Father, I pray that every person in this sanctuary today would be hearing Your Word this coming week. Hearing Your voice. This is the way walk it. This is the person. Go pray for them. This is the situation. Go speak into it. And I'll tell you, the next week, Testimony time will take up the whole service. Jesus! God bless you, Richie. Amen.